Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Grumpy Old Gamers podcast. You can't teach an old gamer new tricks. I'm Ryan, and I have the gang with me again today. It's our monthly meetup with everyone. We got Rob. Hey, folks. We got Damon. It's going on? And we got Brent. I'm, I'm waving virtually. Hey, people. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start the... up a fund for uh, Brent's web camera, if yeah. you all want to chip in uh, <laughs> $3 each. That's right. <laughs> I actually have like three of them and just nothing works and not even the built-in one I don't know $3,000 laptop and nothing works sounds about right, sounds yep. about right. <laughs> <laughs> well how's everyone doing everyone keeping their heads down and their hands yep. clean <laughs> yeah business as usual if business is the basement but yeah it's been good yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, I'm just still working away. Work home, eat, sleep. <laughs> well, before we get into news, I just wanted to uh, just send uh, thoughts to everyone who's listening and, you know, the thoughts to the families of uh, the people affected by that snowbird crash on uh, yesterday there. Um, it was just so weird because, like, they just flew by here on Friday. And, yeah. you know, we're all out in the backyard and everyone's, like, cheering and clapping and, like, you know, it was it was doing what it was supposed to. It was, it was our operation inspiration, and then just such a such a tragic end to to that to that celebration. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was uh, horribly sad. It actually reminded me of the uh, the time when they had one of the fighter jets go down in uh, in the lake here in Toronto. Right, M- many many moons ago. <laughs> but anyways. I just wanted to call a little attention to that, you know, us being a Canadian show that, you know, we, uh, we appreciated what they were doing, but, uh, it's just a, a sad, sad, uh, thing to happen. Yeah. And talking about sad, sad things to happen. Epic showed the unreal game engine five. <laughs> was that a bad, was that, that a bad segue? That segue was about a two out of 10, buddy. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making light. I'm just trying to up the mood a little. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Epic showed off the Unreal Engine 5 running on the PS5 this week. They showed some clips of some games. And that, you know, they they really got something with that Unreal Engine. Anyone, anyone got anything they want to add about that? No, just uh, it was a pretty amazing lighting effects. You know, it was... Uh... I, I did read afterwards that um, even though it was running on a PS5, they said uh, a PC with an SSD and a 2070 would be about similar of what it could run, about the same same resolution there. So, ah, uh-huh, gotcha. It was more of a hey, they have a partnership with PS5, but that demo wasn't exclusive to PS5. I guess they were saying um, all the major players will play nice when it comes to it. So. Yeah, I, I kind of had the the feeling that there was a little bit of uh, a marketing partnership there to set some level. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was cool to tie in there. Uh, just to keep derailing this, Ryan, um, uh-huh. <laughs> where they said that anyone using the Unreal Engine right now, I think uh, I think when you guys posted this as well, that anyone using the Unreal Engine now, it's free until you make the first million dollars off of it. That was a very nice uh, way to yeah. draw attention to the engine. Yeah, I saw that. That was. Uh... That's interesting, right? Like, yeah, it's good. It's uh, you know, kind of draw a lot of um, interest in it before it uh, drops in twenty twenty one. I guess is when they're they're looking at Unreal Engine five. So, yeah, it's pretty mm-hmm. exciting. Uh, Unreal, I don't know. It just seems to be like I don't want to call out EA, but Frostbite just hasn't done what it's supposed <laughs> to do. Oh God, no. <laughs> yeah. Fro- yeah, Frostbite is it's just great if Frostbite works the way they want it to work never mind trying to do new things with it right it's supposed to be awful to do anything with but yeah, yeah. i have i've not read any developer like I, even um even bioware was saying oh that's a huge like fault of why anthem like as the part of the anthem debacle was because of mm-hmm. that them them being forced to use frostbite mm-hmm. right right yeah i looks, I, I, so I feel sad every time i hear anthem <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. 
Well, I'll go a little bit out of order here because I that was one of the one of the next bits of news here. Um, that they they just the, the Anthem developers just announced this week that they've begun trying to figure out what went wrong. I'm a little that was a little disheartening because I kind of thought they were already working on this. <laughs> there's a there's a small team of about thirty developers at Bioware that are specifically working on Anthem Next. They call it. Um, but yeah, they're uh, it's just. I wouldn't necessarily call it a skeleton crew, but it's a pretty small amount of people to to try and fix something that was that uh, that askew. <laughs> it was, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've been I haven't played in a little while, but I've been playing you know off and on, and you know they've kind of messed up the loot system. They put a cap on it, and um, you know they've been claiming for months now. It's say, yeah, we're fixing things, we're doing updates. So yeah, it was just kind of strange to hear them say, "Hey, well now we're going to try to figure out what went wrong." So yeah. was that just like a placeholder, you know, to keep yeah. people happy? And yeah, they're on record saying that it's a, a ways away yet. Don't expect it anytime soon. They've essentially said so. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm I'm thinking I'm covered because I have like a copy for like PC, PlayStation Four, and Xbox. So we're not going to go there. Oh man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> maybe they're maybe they're just looking at it to like bring out this next for the next generation. Be a good little launch launch for them for that. Maybe on the Unreal Engine. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be a cold day in hell before you use the Unreal Engine, but uh, maybe, you know, maybe, uh, who knows? Weirder things have happened. Microsoft and Nintendo are working together, so who knows? The world's, uh, world's open right now, so. Yeah. It's true. You know, if, um, I don't know, have you guys ever, did you guys ever look up the Kutaku article on the whole Anthem debacle? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If you, um, if you get a chance to read that, it is, it's something. It's really. Yeah, it's a Jason Schreier article. It's, uh, right, it's yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good read. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I read it and honestly, there were some things in it that even kind of shocked me because, you know, I've been like, on Anthem since the very beginning. I recommended it to hundreds of people that I'm just sitting there going, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but the article was absolutely really great and, you know, brought up a lot of uh, things that, uh, you know, I didn't know. So it was good. He could read. That's uh, the whole Anthem things made me reticent when I look at uh, even things like the Unreal Engine 5 uh, you know, tech demo, right? Because we saw an Anthem tech demo that looked groundbreaking and amazing. Yep. And it's just, it was so far off. And uh, <laughs> it just, it just makes me a little bit, uh, I'm a little hurt by that. I don't know. It's just, yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I see new tech demos, I feel weird about it now. So. It's true, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that first Anthem tech demo, like uh, from E3 there, where they were, you know, yeah, it, it looked unreal. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was so hyped for it. But yeah. It's like that Aliens Colonial Marine demo when they first uh, did the tech oh, demo there. I don't know if you guys remember seeing that. Yeah. It looked freaking amazing. And then they yeah. actually show side by side, and it looks like you're going from like Xbox One to Xbox OG. Like the graphics yeah. were so complete. OG, right? That's what the kids say. That's right. Anyone here? Oh yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, fair enough. Should fair totally enough. work that into all your uh, lingos. Like that and holy doodle, right? That's the other. Yeah. Uh, okay. Holy doodle. Holy doodle. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh. So yeah, tech demos are always absolutely just a. Uh, you 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 watch it with a grain of salt, but you get excited and. Yeah. You know. I, I kind of missed the days when there was like a like a dude standing on stage with a controller in his hand, like playing a version of the game. Like that, you yeah. don't really see that. Yeah, that's uh, those days are long gone, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now it'd just be a guy in a sound stage somewhere. Yeah. yeah, digital direct. Yeah, yep. Gi giant crab. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there was also a uh, a ghost uh, ghost of Tsushima trailer release this week, and yep. um. Man, oh man, like, Sony is really loading up the back end of the PS4 here. Like, if if this game plays half as good as it looks, um, wowza. That's all I'm going to say. Yep. They are really good. All they can of the last bit of that generation, eh? 
Yeah. Scheduled for July 17th. That's coming out. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, all same day as Paper Mario. There you go. Ooh. Excellent segue, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm going to be a segue. I just know it was as funny as like of two games exactly not even remotely close to each other competing. It's like like Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal. You just, uh, <laughs> yeah. What's a game that's like involves rocks? Because then they could have like a pig, because <laughs> you know, Samurai Swords, Paper Mario. Yeah. Yeah. And then like a rock, paper, scissor day. I don't know. I'm a marketing genius, Damien. <laughs> They, they can sort of do that, though. There you go. There you go. But yeah, they... Uh, um, so it was weird with this Paper Mario thing. Uh, the day before they kind of uh, put out an official announcement, I was... Uh, before Right before bed, I was looking in the Nintendo store, and I, I usually never click on the coming soon <laughs> section, but, I, but it was lagging, and it happened to click on it. This time I was... I was like, they ha- they have Paper Mario in there already, and I was like, oh, did this get it? Oh, well, I guess we I guess we knew it was coming, but I mean, but you had the data, and then the next day was when the news seemed to break. So I don't know if it uh, right at midnight they put it up in the like Eastern in, in the store or or what. But anyways, I watched a trailer. It looks like typical Paper Mario. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I played the one on the Wii, and um, I, I didn't mind it. It wasn't uh, it wasn't what I expected, I guess, because I'd never really tried one before the one on the Wii. And um, then I tried the one on the 3DS, and ugh, I did not like it one little bit. Yeah, but, I've never never played a Paper Mario game, so I don't know anything about it. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's my... like... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say it's it's uh it's Mario RPG, is basically what it is, right? Like, it's it's doing Mario stuff in an RPG setting. Okay. Um. Oh. Yeah. So like, it's like it's like the thousand um, thousand year whatever game was just kind of in a new paper style or. Yeah. What, what was the original RPG? Why can I not remember? Is thousand thousand years? There was one. There was a lot of Super Mario RPG. There was, I think, there was a, wasn't there Super Mario RPG? Yeah, yeah. like, and had, I can't remember the name of the subtitle for it, I guess, but okay. So that's that's the same thing. It's just, uh, it's so it's an RPG. It's not an action game, eh? Well, you still do Mario stuff in it, but it's not a platformer at sure. all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like you're questing in it, essentially, right? Right. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm not super excited about it because, you know, two for, two for two. I'm, the, <laughs> right, I'm right. Meh. It's funny. The only reason I bought the one on the Wii was because, for the first like six months of the Wii, there was nothing out for it, and it came out, <laughs> and I was like, I, I just need to play something new on the Wii. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was exactly the reason why I bought it, and that was my first and only experience with a Paper Mario game. Okay. And I mean, it was all right. I, it just sure. didn't, I don't know, it didn't grab me. Yeah. It's really strange <clears throat> being a Mario game, just the little fanfare this has gotten. Like, it's like, oh, by the way, two months from now? Mario Paper game. Mario. Yeah. yeah, here you go. Well, they can't. Uh, they can't beat the uh, the fanfare of uh, Animal Crossing. It just <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. So huge. Yeah. It's yep. cultural now at this point. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah you bet. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was that. That was probably the right game at the right time. I think. Yes. Just just mm-hmm. seemed to be that perfect. The perfect thing. It was everybody got to be Zen by playing that game. So. Yeah. You could yeah. pretend well, to be outside. That was, uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. There's trees and grass. Look at that. <laughs> well, yeah, that's exactly we can use this it. now. <laughs> it's exactly it because people, you know everyone's like, um, everyone was buying up Wii's and then it came out. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah, it's just a perfect storm. Yep. Yep. And then it's so yeah, it's uh, just a fun little time killer game, right? Yep. You bet. Mm-hmm. 
So, uh, what else we got here? Um, oh, Lego, Lego Ninja Go is available for free until May 21st on uh, PS4, Xbox, and PC. It's not advertised anywhere, though. Like, you have to actually go yeah. in. And, and uh, I verified that today. I downloaded it on the PS4. Like, you actually okay. got to go look for it, and it's free. But it's just doesn't appear in any of the, like, Flash menus. Interesting. So I'm going to do an old man thing here. Um, what's Ninja Go? <laughs> uh, Ninja Go is Lego Ninjas, Rob. Well, I, I got that much. Like, is it a is was it a kids TV show or was it a an animated movie or like I could Google it, but I got you all here. You guys are all uh, you guys are well, young and hip. So, well, honestly, I didn't think you'd question me beyond me saying it's a ninja game. So. <laughs> You just got well, caught, Kashmir, is yeah. what happened there. Okay, fair enough. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a valid question. You know, it's like all these Lego things that come out are from other IPs. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but I've never heard, like, the, you know, normally it's Jurassic World or Batman or something. It's like... Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this one's actually the Lego Ninja Go movie game. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's Legoception. So, so it's yeah. an IP of an IP of an IP. Yeah, and yeah. it's apparently a television series as well. Yeah. Oh. Ah. yeah. A Lego go. television series? Yes. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Showing our age here, gentlemen. Showing our yeah. age. <laughs> Just when I hear you, you say like a movie of a game of a movie, I always think of Street Fighter, the game from the movie from the game. <laughs> yeah. Remember the, uh, they did like the Mortal Kombat digitized? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Right. Fantastic game. <clears throat> did that, did that come out on any combat theme? Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> did that Street Fighter movie game movie game game movie come out on any consoles, or was that strictly arcade? It was the. It came out on the Saturn. I know that for sure because okay. I, I had it. <laughs> and um, okay. I don't know what else. Uh, dear. Right how, now. Long, how long did you wait in line for that one? <laughs> oh, I'm betting I just walked right up to the front with that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, me and all the other Saturn owners. <clears throat> yeah. We can just do one better and have, like, paper Lego Street Fighter. Ooh. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I wanted to... I wouldn't just broadcast that out here, Brent. That's, that's gold. You should... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it came out for PlayStation and Sega Saturn. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. I guess that makes sense. Didn't do really well. Can't imagine why. <laughs> Can't imagine yeah. why. Um, I was also going to mention a last bit of news here because it was kind of a quiet news week. Um, Grand Theft Auto V is available for free on the Epic Store, and they are having an epic sale on the Epic Store right now. A lot right. of uh, a lot of crazy sales on there. Yeah, you bet. You bet. But if you're looking for the Grand Theft Auto on another uh, platform. You know, yeah, for free. free. I mean, you can't beat that. Sadly, it's, I'm probably going to download it, even though I already have it on Xbox. It sounds like they've been having a lot of trouble with the crashing their servers the second they launch that. Not that Epic servers are great anyway to begin with, but yeah, there were actually people reporting that trying to download it changed the um, default language on their Epic Store app. Oh, weird. <laughs> Like one guy had a screenshot. His uh, he went to download it, and then all of his language changed to Russian. That's epic. Yeah, it's yeah. epic, right? That's that's, that's pretty epic, awesome. Right? They should yeah. probably stick to the engines and uh, not do the game stores. But well, yeah. if anyone else find it weird that this wasn't given away on uh, on the Rockstar launcher, agreed. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or is uh, everyone already uninstalled that? I kind of wonder if that's something that's... Uh... <laughs> yeah, sounds like they're waving the white flag a little bit on that one. <laughs> yeah. It's probably a good life choice. Because you could get uh, San Andreas for free, and I was, yeah. like completely free, and I was just like, oh, yeah, and then I... Because it's one of my favorites, and I downloaded it, and God, it was horrible. Like, it, it was jaggy. It couldn't play. There was no controller support, just... Oh yeah, man. no controller support. Oh man, no. yeah, maybe that. I think you answered the question then of why it wasn't on the Rockstar launcher. Yeah, so fair enough. 
Yeah. Yeah, it, it was something. But um, I, I think this has probably been, I, I think they've probably been doing this for the last few days because my, my GTA 5 is still working on the Xbox. And um, so I was figuring, uh, not last night, but the night before, to actually try the online. And nothing, it was dead. So I checked um, outages. And, uh, yeah, it was completely down. So last night I actually did get on and managed to uh, create my character and mess around with it for a little bit. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. I mean, I've heard a lot about it, but, uh, yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah, it's a great... Anytime they do a, a free game when it's that high quality, right, it's it's still good news. Even That's if right. your launcher's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's move on into more exciting uh, prospects here. Uh, who wants to go first and what they've been playing? Hands up. You can't see me. I'll do it. I'll go. Oh, oh there you go. Right. There no, you go, go ahead, David. You go first. All right. So uh, I'm gonna blame I'm gonna blame Rob for this. But last time uh-huh. we talked, we had a mini a little bit of a challenge to finish some games that we had been playing, and oh, I don't know how how we made out on that one, but. You were playing SteamWorld Dig 2. Yep. And so we picked that up here. And then and then it kind of spun off this whirlwind of Metroidvania style games because my fiance doesn't really know what a Metroidvania was. So we played SteamWorld Dig 2 and she she loved it, right? So awesome. then that moved us into Hollow Knight. And that's the first Hollow. game that I've been playing this past month. And I wish somebody would have told me that it was like over 60 hours of gameplay because maybe <laughs> it, <laughs> <laughs> picked it up but it, it's uh it's from a developer called team cherry and it was made by three people uh Seriously? in australia three wow. people yeah That's not impressive. including the, not, not including the composer but it's and once i knew that i just i wanted to peel back more and more and more of the layers and uh it's incredible it's tight tight controls super unforgiving so it's hard um but like, I hate to use the word souls like, but yeah, you gotta, once you die, you can find your way back to your body and regain all your souls and stuff. Like it's got a few of those uh, mechanics in it, but it's just got so much charm and it's got so much passion behind the work itself. And it's, uh, everybody should maybe just put a little bit of time into it. Although I do warn you, the first few hours are a little bit of, uh, takes a while to, to kind of, you know, get moving a little bit, but once it does, it really opens up and uh, I really do recommend it. Um, but it's hard. Um, it's it's a tough one. So uh, check that one out. Anyone played Hollow Knight? No, but yeah. it's on my. I've heard nothing but great things about it, and um, I yeah, it's one of those games that's on the need to play list. Yeah, I actually have it downloaded, and it is on my need to play list, but haven't gotten there yet. But yeah, definitely interested. Yeah, it's uh, it goes on sale pretty frequently too, and it's I mean even even full price I think it's eighteen dollars for the uh, mm-hmm. the Void Heart edition, which is all the DLC and everything contained inside of it. So it's uh, oh. and yeah, it's uh, it's a good one. So now now you understand why all the hype of the sequel announcement was uh, was there. Absolutely, yeah, yeah I do okay. do get it, yeah. And uh, especially with the ca- the subject of the second game, the protagonist is from from the first game as well, and not necessarily Hollow Knight. I won't get into it, but um, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, and the other game that I've been playing, and I've recently got back into PC gaming because now I have a rig that's able to run PC games. And the first thing that I put, I I was I played Gears Tactics, and uh, hard, huh? I'm excited to hear about this. Yeah. And so has anyone played XCOM? I know it's everyone's going to draw that parallel to it, but so it's very similar to XCOM, but I have to say Gears just seems to be the perfect world for a tactical shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, just the way like uh, the cover mechanics, the way that they were all built in, like it just seems to be like, like it reminds me of playing Gears, but just zooming out and sitting up above it and looking down at it and being able to control everybody on the battlefield and seeing what everybody else is doing. Um, and it looks wonderful. It sounds wonderful. It's polished to all hell. It's fantastic. Um, it removes the grid system from XCOM. So there's a lot more freedom of movement. So there's no grid. Um, one of my gripes about XCOM was like, you know, you can, you shoot and then like your turns over kind of thing. You have, uh, gears has action points that you can use so you can do multiple things in every turn and you can do it in any order. Um, it works, it works really well. And, uh, 
funny enough, I have a, it's going to sound kind of corny, but I have a bunch of Razer RGB gear and the coalition is program. I had no idea about this, by the way, I set it up. I was playing it last night and the, all of the RGB stuff, like it syncs with the game. So when like you're under fire, like all of your lights are like flashing and you get hit, everything is blowing, <laughs> blowing red. And like, oh, wow. it was, yeah, it was, uh, I had no idea about that. I didn't know what was happening. I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. And, uh, it added an extra layer of immersion. That was a happy surprise. So, uh, that's a good one. I think you guys should check that one out too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been hearing some good things about it. Um, to, to take you back into the world of Switch, though, did you ever try <coughs> the Mario and Rabbids? Yes, I have that. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's another... Yeah. Uh, that's the last one I've played, but yeah, I'm... Uh, uh, so, you mentioned about it not having a grid, so how do you know how far you can move? Like, you just kind of move an arrow and it only goes so far, or... Yeah, like, you can, you can draw your paths, and, like, the farther you draw your path, you can see uh, little waypoints, and each waypoint would take one action point away from your movement. So you're, you're, uh, you're one action point away from, uh, from your character that you're moving. So it's, uh, and like, sometimes it's a little bit more forgiving. Like it's like, so like, I know with the grid, you can only move so many spaces, but with this way, you can be like, I want to move over to that wall. And sometimes it'll just let you get to that wall. Kind of like when you're playing gears and you press the A button to go behind cover, he kind of like snaps up against the wall. I don't okay. know. If, like, yeah, that's kind of it. Kind of does the same thing in the game as well. So you just kind of everyone just kind of ducks into cover, the closest cover that they can, and uh, yeah, it works really well. It's super polished, dude. Excellent. Right on. Yeah. Right on. That sounds really good. Actually, it reminds me a bit of another one that's on the Xbox PC. It's called I think it's on Xbox as well. It's called Mutant Year Zero, and it's a tactical game, and it has that same kind of movement system with the with the uh, no grid. And it was quite good. I've seen that game. I've just never looked into it. It's actually really, really good. Okay. But yeah, looking forward to Gears. Have it downloaded. <laughs> and then the last game I was playing, which is no surprise, but Splatoon 2. <laughs> Final Splatfest is in a week. <laughs> Got to practice up. <laughs> I'll probably still die in there. Yeah. All right. Um... Yeah, I've uh, yeah. <clears throat> Even though I'm home a lot more, like it's it's hard to get. Seems to be harder and harder to get a little more time to game in the last week or so. Because <laughs> um, yeah, I want to play some more Splatoon. And yeah, it is. It's this coming weekend, right? The fi- yeah, the sure. the Splatfest. Okay, I'll make some time for that. <laughs> Somebody says hello, by the way. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> for a timely cameo. Okay. So uh, Brent, what are you? Uh, what have you been playing? Uh, well, I'll start off with Frostpunk, because I've been back to uh, playing Frostpunk a bit. Okay. <clears throat> and still haven't completed the game because it's got the new Xbox. So many things on sale, and I've just been all, all over the board. I, I've been Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, but it's just like I mean, you're not wrong, like, but <laughs> new shiny things. I need them. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> but um, actually kind of getting in the swing of Frostpunk now and actually understanding the game a little better. And um, started a new game um, with a new map and haven't killed everybody so far. So that's been uh, quite good. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a brutal game. It's very unforgiving, but it's very challenging and, you know, a lot of fun. And like, I think I'd say it the last time where, you know, it's this um, post-apocalyptic world where, you know, if World War II didn't happen and a new ice, ice age came in and you're left with all this like steampunk kind of technology and a steam generator and you basically have to, you know, it's kind of a bit like a, a bit like a city, city builder kind of RTS and you basically have to keep everyone alive while, you know, providing them food, shelter, gathering resources to keep the generator going and just the balance between all of those things can be pretty brutal. It's like you slip up once, you know, you don't feel it right away, but you feel it, you know, days and days down the timeline and you just go, oh, now I'm screwed. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of pre-thought to it, but um, really brilliant game from uh, from a small developer. And yeah, I, I highly, highly recommend it if you're into torture. <laughs> are you playing? 
Are you playing that on PC or are you playing that on console? I'm actually, I, I believe they do have it. Uh, they have an Xbox edition. Um, yeah. I don't know about PlayStation. Um, but yeah, it's part of the Game Pass, and I've been playing it on the um, Xbox uh, PC beta, which I've been okay. using for months now. And I, I quite like it. Like the whole Xbox experience, you know, on yeah. the PC. It's quite cool. Oh, it definitely is. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that, and then that will lead me to the other form of torture, which is Fallout 76. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's been rough. I I just made level seven. I, I tried to get back into it. I'm you know because everybody keeps saying, oh, you got to give it a chance. And then you know you hear about the people who just objectively hate it, the people who love it, and then the people who are just playing it. And um, you know, kind of started back in after the Wastelanders update. And it's always been like this exercise in futility. I just, you know, I'll play it. I'll play it like three or four hours and then like, oh, yeah, okay. So I figured out how to build a wall and got killed 15 times. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's, <laughs> exactly. it, 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 can, it can be that way. Um, and everybody's like, oh, well, you got to, you know, when it gets to the higher levels, it's so much better. And you, you've got to play as a team and everything. And I'm, and then you know I've said to the people that tell me this, uh, you know, friends that are playing, um, where I'm just like, okay, yeah, that's great, and I will do that, but, you know, it's a, it's a lot about exploration, you know, because there's you know a lot to explore and experience, and you know I still kind of like to do that solo. I don't mind getting into the you know the team stuff is just all like you know missions and events, and it's like I don't mind doing that, but after that, yeah, I want to go out and explore the game and have fun. So this last play session was a little bit different. Um, was wandering around, kind of didn't even remember where I left off the last time. I just, you know, appeared in a forest. And um, there was this town, so I thought, okay, I'm going to go over and check this town out. And kind of went all, like, Metal Gear Solid on this thing and started using stealth tactics and shotguns and, <laughs> like, ransacked this small town and took out all the zombies. And But 45 minutes later, it was like, okay, I actually had fun doing this. It's like, what happened? So, um, I don't know whether I've just gotten into the swing of the game, whether they have changed things that actually, it, you know, improve the gameplay experience. Um, like, more tweaks since the Wastelanders update. But, um, I gotta say, this play session was actually enjoyable. Like, I mean, you know, I noticed that a few things like, you know, my health and thirst weren't going down as fast. Um, the reactions were, you know, a little bit snappier. Like, um, it seemed very slow before. And it, it, actually, if you play it, and you play it in first-person mode, you, you would think you were playing, like, Skyrim, but with a Fallout setting. That's literally what it plays like. Oh. And um, so, yeah, this time was a little bit different. Things were more fluid, a um, bit more active. You know, I was actually able to sneak up on... You know, one of the, uh, I think they call them the stricken. I was actually able to sneak up on one of them and do a stealth kill. Whereas before, even if you were crouched in stealth and sneaking up on them, they'd hear you from like 10 miles away and just come running at you. And then you're crouched and, you know, kind of in a tight spot. But <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, I will say um, that they, you know, it seems to have improved. I don't know if they've done more tweaks to it since the Wastelanders came out. But... This play session, I mean, even though I got killed twice, it was still actually fun. I actually felt like I was, you know, doing something and accomplishing something. And it wasn't just this, you know, exercise and futility. It's like, oh, I got to eat every five minutes. It's like, oh, I have to pause right now and eat something, you know, before I can, like, take on these guys that are attacking me. It's like, um, but it, it's been interesting. The only thing I still have an issue with is when you're overburdened um, with weight, yeah, you know, a Skyrim pun there, um, your your action points, which is what you use for, like, running, you know, doing agile stuff, um, when you're overburdened, your action, action points drain, like, super fast. So if you, and obviously you can't fast travel when you're overburdened. So you'll, like, run for, like, 30 seconds, and then you'll slow to a crawl, like, literally a crawl, while your action points rebuild, 
and all you can do is just walk. It's like, you know, if your base to go and drop off all your stuff, <clears throat> the near box to go and drop something off is like a long ways away, you know, you're stuck with that, you know, fast, slow, fast, slow kind of thing for like 10, 15 minutes or whatever until you actually get there to, you know, unburden yourself and drop off all the junk you've collected. So that's still a bit of a thorn in my side, but um, <laughs> like I said, I actually had fun this time, so I don't know what was different. Well, I mean, I still I still want to try it, and I know I had the opportunity to this weekend, but uh, <laughs> it was way too gorgeous. It was way too gorgeous out, and I spent pretty much uh, Saturday Sunday outside just cleaning up the yard and doing all a bunch of yard stuff. So, did a little reality versus virtual. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was free this weekend for for people to try. I just uh, just missed out on that. So, um, all right. Well, any you guys have anything else on Fallout seventy six, Rob? You wanna? Do you, <laughs> Fallout seventy six. Do you feel bad that you missed out on? Uh... No, no, not at all. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even gonna pretend like you are that I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> that I'm remotely upset. I missed that game. So, okay. I'm, I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear. Uh, I trust Brent, and that there must be some fun finally being done in the game. So that's that's good to hear. But uh, man, it's been a long way, long time to get there. So, oh, totally has been. The one thing <laughs> I, I, I will say before I shut up um, is that uh, I've not been happy with Bethesda for a long time. But when you compare this and Anthem, you know, at least they're actually trying to do something, even if it doesn't necessarily work. Like they put a lot of time and energy and and work into creating all this extra content. And like I said, even though I don't necessarily trust them, you know, um, they they added a hell of a lot to the game. And, you know, every time I do occasionally log in to see what's up, you, you can see where things have been fixed and they've been tweaked and they've been improved. So who knows? They actually might make good on their claims of trying to fix the game. Hmm. You're done. I, I mean, the... I... Oh, go ahead, Rob. I was going to say, um, once we're done talking Fallout 76, I was wondering <laughs> if I could add in like a post post um, news news section. I totally forgot kind of a big story this week. So Oh! But uh, I'm going to forget if one of you guys doesn't remind me, so... No, you know what? Uh, I think we're I think we're done. If, uh, yeah. if that's all you got, Brent. Oh, yeah. That's okay. It. Insert news story here, Insert Rob. news story here. It did, I was just thinking, because as soon as you said Bethesda, there was a huge story... This week of um, in Doom Eternal, they've uh, they've uh, got an update where they've installed a kernel level anti cheat, and it's a, it's big news because um, I guess it's by Duvon, um, is the company, but it's a, instead of just being a, the regular type of um, anti cheat where it'll install something in the software, this is actually in at the kernel level, oh. and. Uh, Ten Cent wow. is supposedly partially involved in this. So, is he a um, rapper? Ten Cent. <laughs> I knew this. Was yeah, Ten Cent, little brother of Fifty Cent. Um, <laughs> yep. You know, biggest Chinese gaming company out in the world. Um, oh, oh. Partial, partial owner of basically almost every company that makes video games. Um, and they've come up with this anti-cheat to try and set up in the multiplayer. But the, uh, the big news, and there are a lot of people who know a lot more about it than I do, if you just do a... It would be worth it to kind of check out some YouTube videos on it. There's one by the Modern Vintage Gamer, is one who, who really dug into it a bit. But what makes it scary is not what it's doing, but because it's at a kernel level, what it's capable of. Oh. Like, um, once it's at the kernel level on the computer, it's it's wide open to all sorts of things that um, supposedly... Uh, very dangerous and concerning and that it starts whenever you're playing the game even if you're in single player even though the anti-cheat is multiplayer only mm -hmm. so it's a uh yeah it's a very interesting uh very interesting development i guess so okay yeah i can see how that could be uh you know pretty scary and uh, exploits that would just be uh, not good yeah, and whenever you have Tencent attached to uh, anything there, it's um, kind of scary. So, yeah. But yeah, sorry. 
didn't mean to no. hijack everything there, but uh, no, that, no, that's that was excellent. totally cool. Yeah, I'm glad you glad you brought that up. Uh, do you want to just carry on with what you've been playing? Larry, should, I, since... should I just? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll go right into it. Um, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> uh, I've been studying for a certification exam, so I haven't really played Jack Squat. Um, just got that done. But when I was taking a break um, from studying port numbers and uh, and router protocols, uh, I was playing more Breath of the Wild. Uh, I put about 20 hours in this week. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm glad to hear... I was starting to think I was doing something wrong because I was dying a lot. So much. Like, <laughs> um, like and it, I'd be walking into an area and, and it is so totally not hand-holding to which ways you can go. Like, you've got those couple of story quests that are like hey go to these four champions and do these things and but getting there you face guys who are hundreds of times better than you and you die repeatedly so finally chatting with ryan here i was like no no man you're you're gonna die a lot it's okay just keep trying um <laughs> but i had to stop because i got to a point where i'm trying to do like a metal gear solid into this thieves area to re to retrieve this crown and i have to shoot they're, they really like bananas, so you have to shoot. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Supposedly, it's notoriously awful. Um, it, I'm having a hell of a time trying to get past it. But uh, I, I know exactly where you're talking about. The, the, yeah, whole war, the warehouse situation? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, There's yeah. There's no, nothing worse than trying to th stealth in a 3D area. You know, it's just like... Uh, I know it's good. I know I just have to get better, but it's killing me. So I'm like, okay, I better get back to studying ports. So, <laughs> yeah. Just nice. let me just say that when you think that you've been patient enough, Rob, yep. you haven't been. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the bottom line in that area. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, other than that, um, been playing some more Streets of Rage Four as my uh, go-to ten-minute game. When I have ten minutes, I'll play another level of it and. It's got a lot of lifetime, like you have a lifetime score as well as a regular score. So it's, uh, as you keep accruing points, you release retro versions of characters, things like that. And there's finding this, it's a very deep, deep combat system that when you and I played it, we weren't really getting. But there's a lot to that game that we didn't know. Oh. <laughs> I can so, believe uh, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's great because you can get right in and you can just mash the A button. Um, but there's a lot of subtle combat stuff to it that's uh, it's very cool. Like it's it's such a well-made game. It's just nice, and it's nice to see Sega kind of because uh, it's that is Sega still publishing that, right? Or yep. it's it's yeah, a Sega well, property. Yeah. yeah, it's great to see, great to see. So awesome, I'm doing that. Cool. And, well, uh, um, FTP it, uh, is on 421. <laughs> that's the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, awesome. nice. I did that's have another thing to add after when we're all uh, said and done. Okay. So. Yeah, you bet. Right. Well, uh, um, do you want to add it now before I go with my games? Yeah. Oh, you didn't go your games? Oh, God. I'm so oh. sorry. No, you go ahead. I'll do it after. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, well, I, uh, I actually finished Breath of the Wild finally this week, or as finished as I'm going to, uh, yes. get it. Um, <laughs> I went through and I finished up all the, uh, the quests I got from the expand from the DLC and, uh, I got my motorcycle. Yes. Um, I really wanted to post a video of it, but I just getting computer time this week uh, was impossible. <laughs> You want to come um, over here and beat that banana section for me then, or <laughs> if you're done with the game, or <laughs> uh, I spent so much time on that section, Rob. Like <laughs> once, once you're past the part that the really hard parts, just save, just save right then. <laughs> right, right, okay, okay. But Sorry. um, carry on. Yeah, the only the only thing that's left, and I don't know if there's if you can actually finish it, but it's like the hero's quest where you start out and they just keep dropping you into rooms where you just keep, like you start out basically with a twig, <laughs> a twig and like the worst bow and arrow. 
and you got to kill three guys. And once you kill them, then they send you to the to the next room. Like is that, you go up the elevator. Is that the one? You go higher and higher and higher. Is that the one? I can't remember. Uh, no, it's like a little teleportation disc that oh, appears okay. every time you. And then, but it is like a closed off room. And then okay. every every. Uh, but you get to keep with whatever you acquire. So basically, you start off. You're just in your loincloth and and shoes and. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I did. I, I played like five or six levels of that, and I'm like, oh, I wonder how long this goes. I'm like, I'm not falling down this rabbit hole. I just, <laughs> I just walked away. So um, and then I put up a poll on the page because I wasn't sure if I wanted to play uh, Jedi Fallen Order or Luigi's Mansion Three, and Jedi Fallen Order won. So I oh, there you go. um. I put like four hours into it already, but I just started a new game because I picked up the controller, looked where I was, and I had zero idea yeah. <laughs> what was going on. So, um, And then lastly, because uh, last week I finished uh, A Boat as like one of the um, you know back catalog games. I started up... Uh, my friend Pedro, I wanted to, yeah. I want to finish that one up. So that's been my bedtime game this week. Yeah. And speaking of bananas, speaking of bananas, speaking of bananas. <laughs> what a segue! There you yeah. go. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, one thing I'll mention about uh, that final fight, though, for, um, for Breath of the Wild, like before you get your motorcycle. So you do four more quests for the champions, like based on each champion, and then there's a fifth, um, dungeon. I'll call it. But then there is a final boss, and um, it's not Ganon, but there's a, a final boss you fight. And like compared to the Ganon fight, like the Ganon fight is a marathon, and this was like, yeah, it was so much harder than the Ganon <laughs> fight. Sure, sure, it was so much harder. <laughs> so, um, because I mean, you feel good after that Ganon fight because it's a little challenging. But it, but seriously, you got to set aside twenty minutes for that for that final epic battle. But this one, it was just like, man, I'm gonna run out of food, and I'm running out of weapons, and. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Breath of the Wild, three years old, still such a great game. Absolutely. Nice. Yep. The the one thing I'm a, I'm kind of upset about is that I picked up the Wii U version back in the day and not the Switch. So it still plays and looks great, but you're holding that gamepad, you get about two and a half, three hours worth of game before you have to plug it in, right? So mm. it's a bit of a pain, but it. other than that, it, it plays really well. There's no problem with it, so. Awesome. Yeah. Something everybody should play. That's like the first game that anybody that gets a Switch should buy. It's guaranteed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, uh, I'm going to add one last thing here. I have... Uh, um, I went in the kind of hour I had to, to kind of goof around yesterday. Um, I ordered <laughs> the, the SNES Retro Mouse. Yeah. And um, I've been trying to get it working. <laughs> so, oh, no. uh, like, there's very little documentation on the regular uh, SNES Mouse. Like, which port it works or, like, how you get it working with games. And then add in the sometimes finickiness of a Retrom 5. Sometimes finicky, yeah. eh? Sometimes yeah. finicky, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm frustrated because I this one video I found, the guy, like, you see the guy, he literally fires up his Retrom 5, plugs it in, and then starts using it, and, like, a mouse cursor appeared on the screen. And I'm like, well, I, I have not been able to have that happen yet, so... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I fell down a little bit of a rabbit hole last night, and um, I was looking for some cheap uh, games to use with the with this on eBay. So I ordered a, a copy of uh, Mario Paint for five dollars, including including shipping. Oh sure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And then the only other one I could find that was below, like still cheap enough that it's going to be kind of fun to play, um, was uh, Generation X. Oh. Don't yeah. That yeah, no, I don't remember well, either. Well, isn't that the isn't that the name of that shooter game with like Aerosmith music? Holy smokes, yes, oh, it sure is. Yeah. Re okay. Revolution X, right? Revolution X. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> Man, that that supported the most. Really? That support yeah, there's like sixty wow. there's like sixty games that support the most. And then um there was someone, 60. Wow. Her? Well, 
35 in North America. Sure. That's yeah, still but still, but right? 30 more than I thought. Um, yeah. Arknoid, the SNES version of Arknoid apparently supports it too, but apparently that's a rare game because it's like 80 to to $100 to buy that game on yeah. eBay anyways. Yeah, Arknoid. I had that back in the day. I love that game. <laughs> oh, you so, bet. It's an amazing game. But uh, yeah, anyways, that was my little segue. Um, what did you have there to, to add, Brent? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I get so deep into listening to you guys. It's just like I space out. I'm just like, wow, this is cool. And I always find it fascinating. But anyways, um, <laughs> and, and then I thought you'd stumped us all for a minute going, a game none of us knows. Right. <laughs> With the uh, Generation X, I was like, I don't know this game. Why do I not know this? Um, I was just going to put out there, um, any of you guys ever use the um, PlayStation Now for PC? I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, yeah. It is. They have a PC version, and I still can't fix it. I've been having troubles with it for almost a year now. It lags out, tells me I don't have sure. an internet connection. When I have, like, like literally the best internet connection you can get, my Xbox works, PC works, <clears> massive <throat> downloads, speeds, and streaming. And yet, you know, the PlayStation Now will work for a little bit, and then it will just completely disconnect, lag out, and have tons of problems and you know i've been through all their help forums everything online and you know there's just still absolutely no way to fix it and um, the only reason i mention is because i hadn't you know had it in almost a year and then i thought well well you know i'll, I'll resub to it and they got to have fixed it by now and uh so i did a few days ago and yeah it's uh, completely still not fixed hmm. which is kind of disappointing because you know it's supposed to be one of their you know premier services and just absolutely just doesn't work on on most pcs and they, i see from the forums a lot of people are having these problems mm -hmm. um that totally wasn't what i had to say but it tied into it um the other thing was shadow of the colossus oh yeah yeah i i played about five minutes of it and absolutely couldn't stand it <laughs> and and I, and I know everybody's like, hey, it, was, right there. It, it was a great game. It was like, you know, this and that. And I've been wanting to play it for years. And it's just the camera controls. And every time I tried to change the camera controls, they still did the same damn thing. And it's like, you move one, you move right, it goes left. You move left, it goes right. Couldn't control the horse, couldn't figure out where I was going. Didn't, didn't even get out of the starting zone. You know, when you start the game and you have your horse there, couldn't even control the horse. And I was just like, yeah, the hell with it. So I was wondering if if that was indicative of the game itself, or well, I um, so I got it when I picked it up. I I did the first two bosses, and then I was kind of like, I think I get it from here. I didn't go beyond that. Hmm. So for for me, for Shadow of the Colossus, I uh, I finished it on PlayStation Two, and I think what everyone's experiencing is that it's a PlayStation Two game. Like the controls are. PlayStation 2 era, the cameras are PlayStation 2 era. Mm -hmm. They've up it and it looks fantastic, remastered. Um, but it's an old game. Like it's uh, and I think they were just uh like I can see how some people say, oh, it's a masterpiece, and it, it was ahead of its time, I'll give it that much. But it's uh I think a lot of people had the similar issues with the the Last Guardian, which was made by the same studio. Right, right. And and they were saying they everyone was fighting the controls on that one and everyone is having issues with that one. And they were like, it has such uh, ability to be great, but at the same time, you're still fighting these old cameras and you're fighting the controls. And yeah, I can see how you had some frustration on that one. Yeah, yeah I was wondering if it was just me or not or whether it was just, yeah. you know, the upgraded version on the PlayStation now. But, you know, I, I played the hell out of the PS2. You know, mm. absolutely love Snake Eater. That was like one of my all-time favorite games. Mm. And just you never got to play Shadow of the Colossus. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this now that I've resubbed to the PlayStation now. And yeah, it, it, I think it actually gave me a headache too. It was just like, you know, <laughs> everything, camera controls were off, the controls were off. And I was like, oh. just like, no, 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 I can't do it, can't do it. So I just wanted to find out everybody else's experiences with it. No, I... Uh... I mean, that was one of the reasons that I didn't continue on. Like, I didn't feel that, like, even after two bosses, I I was getting the controls. Like, everything 
like it felt like a fight, but that makes sense what you're saying too, Damon. Like if they didn't upgrade the controls at all. <laughs> it's like trying to go back and play Mario Sunshine as much as I want to yes. every time I fire it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I, you know, I want to finish that game so badly, but holy heck, it's just <laughs> Yeah. Inverted controls should just be taken somewhere and, and left in a field on yeah. fire. Yeah. Oh, totally. And the thing was you can go in and change the controls, and I did. And they still did the same damn thing. Yeah. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> so about PlayStation Now for the PC, that like that's a app you download, and then it's anything that's on PlayStation Now. You sh- you're like, how does it tie to your account? It's well, just... basically, as you know, you already obviously have to have you know a PlayStation account, and I've used it on the PS4 before. I don't currently have one. Um, mm-hmm. But I've used it on the PS4, and it ran great. I mean, they have Lost Planet, which I never got to play. They've got all three of them. Um, and the one thing i got to say that I did like about it is they don't remove the games. Once they're on there, they're on there permanently, which oh. was, you know, a big plus for me. And this is a PC version, just, you know, like kind of like the um, the Xbox beta. Um, it's an app that you download. You just sign into your PlayStation account like you would on your PS4. And um, oh. and and then it just shows you a list of all the games. You can actually create your own lists for um, games that you want to play that you haven't yet. Um, and while it was working for the you know for the first six months, and this has been over a year that it hasn't worked right, um, you know I got to um, uh, go back and um, play a ton of great games. I actually got to play. Um, just trying to think, um, you know, that they have. Um, uh, they have Metal Gear Solid V, um, you know, a lot of the great Metal Gear games. They had a ton of them. They literally have every kind of Resident Evil that you could imagine or want to play, which was a big selling point for me. Um, and I got a, you know, I also got to play Heavy Rain, which mm. I missed out on playing on the PS3, and I thought it was fantastic going back and playing it. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was a great service while it worked. Um, hmm. But now it just, you know, it doesn't want to work. It'll work for like maybe five, maybe ten minutes. And um, and then it will start to lag out. And then you'll get an error saying that your internet connection isn't stable enough to handle the stream and just completely crap out. But, I mean, the app itself is slick. It does work. Um, you know, it's got that same, like, um, idea with uh, on, on the PS4 how, you know, you've got just this line of games and you can scroll through them. Well, it has multiple lines for types of games, your list, and then oh. it does them all in alphabetical order, so you can scroll through them alphabetically, too. And it is quite a good app. I just you know, wish they would really fix the problems with it. Yeah, it's got a free seven-day uh, trial there, too. Might have to try it out. Yeah, it hmm. does. Yeah. And they got Spider-Man. Yes, they do. That was also why I resubbed, because right. Spider-Man. <laughs> well, that's a big difference between their service. I think we've talked about this before in the Xbox uh, Game Pass is that you don't download the games. You have to stream them. That's even on the console, too. Um, there are certain PS2 and PS4 titles that are downloadable. Oh, but okay. O- only, only those certain titles and only from PS2 or PS4. None of the PS3. And... Right. But the, and that's and just very few titles that you can actually do that. All the rest are streaming. Excellent. Very cool. Ooh, okay. Huh. You learn something new every day. That was my Me. one thing. I'm going yeah. to bed. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, so moving right along here, uh, the poll this week. Um, we had a poll? We had a poll this week. Cool. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Did it. So it was, uh, it was to do with the new consoles because... Um, you know, we there's been a lot of news over the past couple okay. weeks. Yeah. yeah and uh, the question was, are you going to be partaking in a new console or waiting for the dust to settle? And um, tied right down the middle um, is is getting a PS5 or uh, Xbox Series X. And then in a close second was uh, going to wait for the dust to settle. So, Right. And, and then, a really close third was the Amico, right? Yeah. Just right. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then the, in third position, uh, going for the Intellivision Amico. <laughs> right, right. Okay. That's fine. No love for it. I get it. That's okay. That, that is all. 
I'm sorry. I mean, I really want to support it. I just, I want to see it get out there. I want to see it put out some good games. And then I would actually consider buying it because I love my retro stuff. And I had so much fun with the original systems, mm. you know, as I'm mm -hmm. sure we all did. I'll let you guys know when it comes in. We'll, uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm holding out that it's, I'm hope I'm hoping it's good, but, uh, yeah. So how, how are you going to stream with that? Because I'm sure you're going to be streaming the games. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's got. I'll just hook it up to the Elgato. It's got. Uh, nice. It's got full HDMI. HDMI and, yeah. yeah. Oh, sweet. That I did not know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See some upraised uh, Astro Smash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there better be Tron Deadly Discs day one as well, because. Um, oh. Otherwise, it's not worth it. But I, I love that. Yeah. When uh, when does it come out, Rob? <laughs> October. Oh, hopefully the social distancing crap is over by then. I'm gonna. <laughs> I want to come play some Tron Deadly Discs. Well, you can oh, sit outside oh. the window because you can use your phone as a Bluetooth controller. Perfect. So. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> you should really contact him about your commission there, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'll talk yeah. to Tommy. Tommy Tallarico there. Oh God. That's well, Tallarico's system. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 back involved with it. So it's yeah. Uh, oh, he's back now. Yeah, he's heading it up, uh, and that's it's. It, that's why it's actually launching, and the Atari one is just tied up in litigation. So, oh, yeah, let's not go there. We'll, we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a whole show on that. I know. So, um, yeah, back to our poll. What's our choices, though? Oh, that's, we had talked about the, that in the previous show. The um, well, just the, those were the winner. The, that's what came up. Um, PS Five and Xbox tied for first. Nice, nice. And then um, in second was P people are going to wait for the dust to settle. And then uh, Rob came in third. Yeah, that idea kind of came from um, um, one of the previous shows that we were all on together when we were trying to make a choice on that. So I was right. just thinking, are our choices still the same? Mm. Yeah, no change here. He was well, just like, yeah, we're down. <laughs> yeah, no. Nope, <laughs> Xbox all in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, if anything, my I'm starting to lean more towards a PlayStation again because uh, I'm getting a new PC here in the next couple weeks. So, right. <sighs> yeah. One of us. One mm -hmm. of us. <laughs> Sorry, Damon. I... That's I okay. Just... I'm going to go play. I'm gonna play Gears Tactics downstairs on PC after. So it's, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, you're still supporting the Microsoft uh, infrastructure there, Ryan. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, oh, I'm yeah. still. Uh, if I do get a next gen, um, assuming I can get a job by then, uh, it'll be a. Um, it'll it'll still be PS5. Just same reasons as you guys. There's just um, all the games I want to play from Microsoft are available on the PC. So. They'll still get my money. They just won't get the console money unless they drop something that's I'd absolutely have to get on the console. But true, yeah. true. See, right cool. now it's like it's working against them because even uh, the tactics there. I think it's a PC only right now, right? Mm -hmm. That's like strange. That. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think they they do have plans to launch that on console in the future, but they wanted to launch it on PC. But it's easier to program that tactics game for PC, I would imagine. So, yeah, yeah fair enough. Fun. Yep. Yeah, well, sure. Um, does it have controller support? You know, I did see controller support in the settings. Um, I don't know how deep those control settings go, but uh, I did see it in there. So, I, like, who knows? It could just be for camera control or something like that. But yeah, yeah, could be. Yeah. Yeah, um, as you're saying, you know, I, I have my PC, got my Xbox, my One S, so, you know, I can still get all my Microsoft content. So for me, it's still probably going to be a PS5. Sure, sure. B barring the, um, uh, what goes on in the beginning of June. <laughs> with <laughs> right, the yeah. reveals, or the non-reveals. Okay, well, uh... We'll move on to the cheap bag game challenge here. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Rob, I uh, I picked Totes the Goat for you to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was totally amazing. <laughs> um, it wasn't bad. 
actually. No? Uh... It's probably the least bad, cheap bad game we've picked. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, it wasn't great, but it, it was a Qbert clone. And I love Qbert, so it was like... Oh, um, was good stuff. Uh, yeah, so it was like... A, it was a Crossy Roads version. It was like a Qbert version made for kids, even more so than Qbert was. Well, Qbert would swear... <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Kubert was brutally hard though. So. <laughs> yeah, Kubert was extremely hard back in the day. Yeah, this is this is Kubert for babies. But it was uh it was good. I mean, you you're gonna just the idea behind the game is you're saving up coins to get other stuff, which is like the Crossy Roads thing, mm. uh, and all every phone game Ryan has ever picked for this challenge. Um, or <laughs> it's supposed to be what brings you back to it, but. Yeah, it was fun. It it didn't make me rage quit. It didn't. Um, okay. It was yeah, no Nikki. It was no Nikki by <laughs> any stretch of the imagination. Uh, or uh, hopefully it's nowhere near as bad as the game I've got picked for Ryan right here. Uh oh. Um, rut row. <laughs> rut row. <laughs> your game is uh, one called. Let's see if that actually. It's called No Thing. No thing. No thing. Oh, and it's 24 whopping cents. It's 24 cents. It's normally $2.50, which um, would still almost put it in our category of uh, still fall under cheap bad games. Um, I, had, I have to admit, I picked this in the last 20 minutes before we started recording because I just finished writing that test. Yeah. So it looks really bad, but it could be really awesome. I haven't had enough time to try it, so. Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully for okay. your sake, Brian, it's awful. But hopefully for our viewers, it's even worse. So, well, I gotta admit, Toast the Goat. It was just the name. Yeah. Like, I, it was down there cheap. It looked bad. It, uh, and then I'm like, Toast the Goat. Toast the Goat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just like how it sounded. It, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah well, it did. ain't. It ain't no thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that <coughs> oh, excuse me, that oh. uh, that brings us, I think, to the end of the show. Unless anyone else has anything they want to add last minute, but as we've been talking, it uh, brought anything no. to their mind. No, yeah, nothing I can think of. No, except go support the A in Television Amico. <laughs> Forty there launch titles so far. Forty launch titles, which is what? thirty-nine, thirty-nine more than the uh, 3DO had. So. Um, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's they should put that on the pamphlets. Yeah. <laughs> we have forty times the <laughs> yeah, forty times, times the games. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, all right, everyone. If uh, if that's it, um, this has been the whole grumpy old gamer gang here this week uh, for our monthly check in. So um, thanks everyone for watching slash listening. Uh, as a, oh, as we mentioned last week, we have a new e email that you can email us at, uh, which is makeusgrumpy at gmail dot com. And uh, <laughs> love it, love it. And um, and a Twitter account under the same name at makeusgrumpy. So can uh, reach us at either of those. And also we have our website www.thegrumpyoldgamers.com. dot com. That's where we post all of our original content. And, of course, the Facebook site, which uh, is probably the most active out of all of them. Just search the Grumpy Old Gamers on Facebook. And, uh, yeah, that's another episode in the cam. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Have a good evening. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night.